trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Are bestsellers all they're hyped up to be? The Terrible Book Club explores whether or not you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. If you've ever seen a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. Welcome to episode 40 of the Terrible Book Club. That's right, we've read 40 terrible books so far, and this one isn't helping us any more than anything else we've ever done. I'm Chris. This is Paris. Hey, what's up? And uh, this time, what are we, uh, I don't even really remember the title, to be honest with you. <laughs> so so I, I don't know why I'm the one introducing it, because like I just got to this second right here, and I realized I don't remember the title. Hey, Chris. Yeah. That, that's why I have like a note sheet up sometimes, because uh, if I don't do that, I will forget the title of the book and the author somehow. Okay, uh, well, so, save me then. So uh, this is episode 40, and this time we read The Angel Wore Fangs, the seventh book in a Deadly Angels series by Sandra Hill. <laughs> I still kind of fucked that up. I don't um, know why they focus on the angel part when there's like a mishmash of like three different things that this book... You know how, like, usually in romance novels, you have to, like, kind of pick and choose, oh, it's a vampire, oh, he's he's a mermaid, oh, he's an alien. Not That's not Sandra Hill's philosophy. Sandra says, you can have it all, baby. Oh, yeah. You can no, have I mean, all, any, whatever mixture you want. You want a, <laughs> a Viking vampire angel, well, here we are. That's what's well, yeah. happening in this book. I mean, and I mean, not just the protagonist. I mean, you can also have whatever villains you want. You know, you got Satan, you got ISIS. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's all there. I, and this is not really, this isn't an exaggeration, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, so this time, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to read the back of the book. Um, actually, before I do that, I'm going to explain a little bit about what we do, uh, since I realize we haven't been doing that for the last almost four years. So um, uh, at the Terrible Book Club, Chris and I choose books that we think will be bad. So we're literally judging books by their cover or their summary. Um, we take requests from people sometimes, uh, and we read them. We read all of them. This isn't a show where only one of us reads or where we only read a few pages. We read the entirety of each book we choose, both of us do, um, and then we talk about it. We talk about whether it's bad or not. Um, and most of the time, we're right. Turns out you, you can usually judge a book by its cover. So anyway. Uh, With reasonable accuracy, there's definitely been some true. surprises here, but... While we're on that subject, how about you read the summary on the back of this book, and you can probably see if it's an ac- We'll see how accurate the judgment is just from the summary. All right. <clears throat> New York Times bestselling author Sandra Hill continues her sexy Deadly Angel series as a Viking Vangel's otherworldly mission pairs him with a beautiful chef who whets his thousand-year-old appetite. Once guilty of the deadly sin of gluttony, thousand-year-old Viking vampire angel Nut Sigurdsson is now a lean, mean, vampire devil fighting machine. His new side job? No biggie. Just ridding the world of a threat called ISIS while keeping the evil Lucifer's demon vampires at bay. So when Chef Andrea Stewart hires him to rescue her sister from a cult recruiting terrorists at a Montana dude ranch, Vangel turns cowboy. Yeah! The too tempting mortal insists on accompanying him, surprising Nut with her bravery at every turn. But with terrorists stalking the ranch in demonoid form, Nut teletransports Andrea and himself out of danger, accidentally into the 10th century Norselands. Suddenly, they have to find their way back to the future to save her family and the world, and to satisfy their insatiable attraction. All right. Well, a couple things right off the bat here, Paris, about just pronunciation. Let's just not even talk about the content here. I just have a few. So, Vangel or Vangel or Vangel? I think, I think it's Vangel. Va- Vangel's probably it, but I the, most of the time I was reading it because it's just V Angel. So I just thought Vangel, as in an angel that lives in a van down by the river, <laughs> perhaps. You know, the homeless vampire angel series would have been like way more effective for me. Also, is, okay, another key question here while we're on this is the V for vampire or for Viking? Because he's both 
And I don't really know which one gets the privilege of being the V here. Which is the more important one, the uh, Viking or the vampire part? Yeah, I guess I guess it should be a a, a wangel, so you get the the V. And the <laughs> yeah, v. The double V. Yeah, yeah. That's so... totally. I was thinking maybe like try to portmanteau the whole thing together to like v- vampangel. Or, yeah, or... yeah. Or, or just never write this fucking book or come up yeah, with this fucking concept. Little... Why would you awful. throw Vikings in? That's what I mean about this book, man. Like Sandra wants you to have it all. I was trying to think of like other combinations that might work for, you know, if, why don't we just get all the things together? How about like, all right, hear me out. Uh, okay. Werewolf, pirate, alien. Yeah, great. I mean, I mean, there's already, actually that already, exa- okay, so not in book form, <laughs> but in, all right, so there's this band called uh, the Lord Weird Slaufeg or Slaufeg. If you're into like heavier music, you might know them. Uh, and they have an uh, an episode. <laughs> they have an album called Traveler. It's one of my favorites. And that whole album is based on a uh, an old role playing game by the same name, uh, where a geneticist creates a race of um, human dog men on another planet. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> that's okay, actually great. not original. Uh, all right, can you do this one for me? Can you can you uh, locate me a? Uh... <laughs> Mermaid, Roman soldier, Buddhist monk. I don't know. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's a that's a tougher one. Uh, uh, I don't know, but you know what? Sandra Hill will probably write about it eventually because okay. uh, all uh, she does uh, is write these fucking books. <laughs> true. Uh, last one then. Uh, let's see if you. Um, I mean, I'm just rolling the dice here. It's like a random table in my head. Like I'm just rolling a couple d sixes here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Mermaid. Van- okay. Zombie. Um. Uh, ninja aspect of Shiva. Ooh, that's a good one. Like an yeah, undead sorry. ninja, like assassin, but also is part of like the Hindu religion or something. Yeah, sorry, I don't, I don't have anything for that. But surprisingly, you know, werewolf, pirate, alien—that's a thing. All right, um, well, let's get back to Viking vampire angels, the, the very specific thing that we're looking at here. Uh, while uh, we're still talking about pronunciations here. Because uh, you said nut, I say knut. Yeah, no, it's nut is how you say it. So the main character's name, most unfortunately, is spelled... Spell it out. It, Spell it out for the us, The main Paris. character's name is most unfortunately spelled C-N-U-T. So <laughs> that is an actual name. It's more commonly spelled with a K. Um, and, I, and I really, really feel like the author specifically spelled it with a C just so she could make a cunt joke early in the book. So for the entire book, I was just calling this guy cunt because it yep, was just, me too. Right, right it was there. just impossible. Like you see those four letters together and your brain goes, cunt, oh fuck. Like you just, yeah. it's over and over again. And I mean, especially given, you know, the context of the book, it was, uh, it was just, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, oh, before we move on, uh, just a shout out to my friend Hillary. She is the one who recommended this to us. She found it in a bookstore, took a picture of it, sent it my way and uh i i mean chris and i couldn't resist it's just it's just the, an amalgamation the back of misery of the book alone was enough for us to get right on board because we only just talked about like two of the weird words on there never uh, yeah. mind lucifer which is a really just lame way to it could just be a demon it like it has fangs it sucks blood it doesn't have to be a vampire too the, in fact none of the vampire part of this had to be there yeah i mean i feel like I mean, first of all, I feel like this entire book didn't have to be there. It doesn't have to exist. But like, (laughs) but yeah, I mean, you're right. It's like they could have been Viking angels and just plain old demons. And it kind of would have been a little more palatable that way. Like, I really feel like her, uh, her, the author's idea here of like just throwing in a pinch of everything was really put us all. I mean, that's why we read it. Cause we were like, why the fuck would you have a book with all of this shit in it? It doesn't make any goddamn sense. Um, I mean, also, not that Viking angels are uh, that much more palatable, but somewhat. Why does the Archangel Michael turn angels into vampires? And why do they specifically have to be Vikings if Michael doesn't like Vikings? Dude, that... Okay, those are two of the many unanswered questions <laughs> from this book. So apparently God needs this, like, legion of only Vikings to be turned into vampire angels so they can, like fight evil in all at, like in all periods of history so they, there was also time travel as we mentioned so uh you know they're they're like oh i don't know like the demons are trying to take over ancient rome and so they all like go there 
and they fight the demons in ancient Rome. And then they're like, oh, no, we got to go to, like, the Middle Ages. And then they go to, like, you know, 1500 or whatever. And they fight the demons there. And so, like, I don't know. That's that's their whole deal. Uh, and they're headed by Michael the Archangel. And he doesn't really like them, but is their boss. Um, he's just kind of like this weird, petulant dad. Like, when he shows up, uh, you he's know, He's just he, kind of an asshole. To, like, he's just mad, upset. He doesn't want to be anywhere. And he doesn't like, like, he doesn't like Vangels. Vangels, whatever. Yeah, and I don't know. And so there's, like, like we said, you know, they can only be vampires. So it's like, or they can only be, sorry, they can only be Vikings. Um, yeah, get your V's right, Paris. Jesus. Sorry. This, oh, oh, I yeah, shouldn't she, say that name. Oh, uh, maybe he, is he a vampire too? Angel? I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think, uh, I think he is. Uh, <laughs> or I don't, I fucking don't remember. No, we drink his blood. So he's like the <laughs> vampire host. Yeah, but isn't Jesus like the original vampire? Like, isn't that a thing with old school goths? Like, that's why there's all these like crosses and, and motifs and what? stuff because they think Jesus <laughs> is a vampire. Yeah, Excuse isn't that me? a thing? I've not heard. No, I've not heard of this. No. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure that that's a thing. That like, like <laughs> Jesus oh. was the first goth, is what you're saying. No, well, no, it was the first vampire that goths worship. Like that's like part of the whole like old school goth thing. You know, it is worshiping Jesus as like the first vampire and like how all vampires came to be. If I'm totally nuts, please somebody point me in the right direction. Lord I think knows. you just met a weird goth in your childhood or something, and he was just trying to be Christian and goth at the same time. No, I mean, Chris, think about it. Why then? Why are there so many cross and like Christian motifs in all gothic like? fashion and literature and like design i mean because gothic has to do with a certain design that was like part of like churches and stuff like that and the like the word today is kind of hand in hand with some of that stuff because they co-opted some of the like more baroque like gargoyle imagery into it but it's not really the same idea i would say yeah i guess i guess that's true uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's the case. But uh, if someone wants anyway, to let me know that I'm wrong, that's fine. Because Lord knows I've been wrong many times yeah. on this show. How about we get back to vampire angel Viking uh, fucking here? Because guess what? This is a romance novel. Yeah. And so, all right. And because it seemed so Christian, because it was like, oh, the Archangel Michael and God. And it talks a lot about how uh, the Norse pantheon of gods are like false and how you know the the one the one god is is the only one i was like oh okay this is going to be a clean book i don't have to worry about sex i'm just oh i'm just gonna uh, stretch and lean back <laughs> and read this book without any problems and then and then you know what happened what happened paris you, you know when i when i realized that this, this i was not gonna get my way well what, what's the moment that you figured it out uh well it's uh it's when Mr. Nut, nuts. Um, that's that's <laughs> when that happens. Bust, bust a nut. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's a creepy uh, masturbation scene that happens, uh, which okay. I, so let's is that set first the scene. Boss? Is that a, uh, I think this is the first masturbation scene we've had to read. It might be. Uh, let's set the scene here. You see, uh, <laughs> Nut has traveled back and uh, inadvertently traveled back in time, back to 18, 850, where he's from originally. Because this lady, Andrea, came to his, like, detective agency front, which I don't know why he has to have. Dude, so again, okay, that's question three. Like, why does he need to have a front for a protection agency when... If Yeah, if he's just working for Michael and he gets assignments from there, you don't have to have a front. You don't have to, like, launder money for God, right? Like, what? Or, oh my I mean, God, they, I... <laughs> they do, like, enjoy... Like earthly delight, like food. Nut is or like used to be like super fat and huge, and he likes himself some food, so he has to have money to pay for that. I suppose. Well, that's but, that's the other thing I don't get is that the vampires in this book still need food. Yeah, the blood like, isn't really anything. Like I, the uh, only time the vampire thing happens is like when he can, can like sexually lick his fangs and then bite <laughs> her sometimes. Yeah, Not and, that he needs to. Yeah, and and also like doesn't end up turning her into a vampire and like. They they talk about <clears throat> this fake blood supplement called Faco. Like, why isn't it called? I can't believe it's not blood. Like, why? Yeah, that's... Why is it not called that? Why is it not called anything else? Like, I know. I uh... I realize why it's called Faco though, because O is the universal donor blood type. So oh, fake okay. O. Okay. I I thought it was unimaginative, but I think okay. All right. I was a little. It bit is wrong, still but pretty still, unimaginative. I can't believe it's not blood. It's way better. I just it is. wish that she would have gone with that. Um. <laughs> 
So yeah, so we have this this creepy ass scene where the well, mailman. I didn't properly set the scene. Oh, oh I'm still sorry, sorry. Winding up to it, I just said that the uh, Nut has this like front agency that he it's just literally like a chair and a desk in an old place that doesn't look like anything. Somehow, this lady Andrea hears of it, and her sister Celie has run off with a man and, like, gotten involved in some ISIS stuff because she's, like, posting to Instagram in a burqa, I guess, and her family's super worried (laughs) about her. But they treat it like it's just her goth phase. They're not, like, that upset about it. They're just like, oh, Celie's up to this again. Just get it. Uh, Andrea, can you just take care of it? We're going on a cruise. She'll be fine. Just to get your sister out of there, please. I mean, get her to not dress like that anymore. Yeah, like, think, think about that. These parents are about to go on a cruise. They learn that their daughter is has potentially been you know has basically been kidnapped by a radicalized sect of islam it's you know some sect some uh faction of isis and they're like yeah and that's exactly what happens they're like oh andrea you're the older sister can you deal with this we have to go on a cruise now bye okay good luck (laughs) and andrea's like oh that damn silly like it's like oh (laughs) what like (laughs) getting into her isis hijinks again yeah recruited by another cult yeah, they're like, well, she. Oh, this always happens to her. Like, one. <laughs> She's time such she a was... party girl. Like, I'm. I accidentally. Par- I got super drunk one night, man, and I woke up in a fucking ISIS comp out. It was lit. Let me tell you. And, yeah, I mean, and they're they're comparing her being kidnapped by ISIS to her you know, doing yoga on an island with some guru. And I was like, these two things are not the same. Like, no. they're probably, like, the, the yoga island guru may be bad as well, but, like, <laughs> not ISIS bad. Like, not... Yeah. Jesus Christ. And it- so... Anyway, Andrea rolls up to the Nut's, like, weird front thing, and she's like, I heard you could maybe save my sister. She was involved in ISIS, and uh, Nut, like, received some kind of, like, foretelling or premonition that ISIS would be involved from Michael, like, he gave a hint or something. So he, like, decides to look into it. Uh, so he tries to, tra- like, transport himself somewhere, and he drags Andrea along by accident, and it doesn't work right, and he ends up in the past in 850, and then Andrea has to hang out with him in his castle, where he's the lord, and so eventually when she goes to sleep for the first night, Nut sneaks into her room and jerks off in front of her. Yeah, well, she's asleep, and he's just creepily staring at her while she sleeps and jerking it in the dark, which to me makes it all the weirder. It's his room that she's sleeping in his bed, so he's like, it's fine, I could jerk off and, like, get in here with her. Although there was already some, like, sexual tension between them already because reasons? I I don't know. I mean, they were just, like, they they just thought each other was hot. Well, weirdly, she thought Nut was hot, but Nut thinks Andrea is not particularly attractive, but is attracted to her. Like, he doesn't think she's very pretty. It literally says that, oh, she's not, you know, especially pretty, but I was attracted to her for you know, shrug, some reason. Um, and, so you know, this book is like the ultimate fucking, like, oh, love at first sight for reasons because you're meant to be, because they're supposed to be life mates by the end of the book. Like, oh, destined to live together forever. If one of them dies, the other one dies. But there's, like, it, there's no foundation or anything. It's just like, oh, I when I touched her, I felt nice. Therefore, I'm with her forever. No, Chris, you forgot. You forgot about the thing that I really hated about. Like, oh, one of the oh things yeah, that I'm I sorry. Really there, hated. there was a little bit of compatibility. There was a, a clear sensory compatibility, you see, because of of pheromones and smell, I guess. Yeah, so, um, so in this book, the author says that life mates know each other because they can each, they can smell each other. They can, they are, it's hard to explain. <laughs> they are the only ones who can smell the unique smell of their life mate. So, and so it's like conscious pheromones, sort of Con- conscious, like scent pheromones. So Andrea keeps smelling peppermint around Nut and Nut keeps smelling coconut around Andrea. And they just keep talking about it. And it's just the lamest fucking convention. I hate it so much. Yeah, and it was like, oh my god, the coconut scent was so nice and overpowering. The peppermint smell was was really all up in their nostrils. And like the whole time yeah. I'm like, I hate both of these smells. This sounds awful. <laughs> I mean, I, I like mint. Peppermint's not my favorite. Spearmint is best mint. Um, And coconut is fine in some applications, but it's not usually my favorite mm. thing. So yeah, I also was like, meh. No, They're thanks. both bad. They're both bad flavors. Uh, yeah. Or I smells. Mean, 
Yeah, and and then it leads to Andrea talking about making a peppermint coconut cake and how great it was going to be. And Chris and I disgusting. apparently both gagged. Yeah, I that was like, that sounds disgusting. I don't want coconut. any. Uh, take that fucking cake away from me, coconut. Get the fuck out candy of here. cane. Yeah, no. Fuck you. Like, fuck this Mint book. coconut? Just no. Stop no, it. I, yeah, I know. Like, why are you taking two things that could be used in other ways well and ruining them by combining them? Just because they start with C doesn't mean they go together, okay? And yeah, yeah, seriously. And then, oh, and then the other smell. Th- so there's that smell thing, and then there's another component to the smell thing where if you're really evil, you smell like lemons. <laughs> yeah, the evilest <laughs> and, fruit. Yeah, <laughs> and I immediately went... Well, Chris and I are fucked because we both love citrus, so we're like always drinking lemon, yeah, like lemon I, and lime I'm stuff. A, I'm a lemonade fiend. <laughs> yeah, you are. And You're I eat me. lemons like oranges because they're fucking delicious, so I guess I'm super evil. Yeah, Chris, you're the fucking prince of hell. Look at you. I, I, uh, so I, guess I always knew it. You know, Paris, yeah. deep inside me, in my lemony center <laughs> that you have yeah, to yeah. get to. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've always known. Yeah, so that's another stupid thing. Uh, there's so many stupid things. Like, Oh, I, sorry, I was just looking through my notes, and I remember how I was saying, like, the Archangel Michael was, like, their, like, petulant dad boss. Uh, yeah. There's a line where he's like, and when will my Archangel website be ready? Oh, and I yeah, was I like, oh, that's the best that. line. Okay, the- let me set the scene here. <laughs> Michael is having a staff meeting with Nut and all his brothers, who are apparently, like, a special division of the Vangels or whatever, and he turns to, like, the IT nerd Viking vampire angel, and he's like, when is my Archangel website gonna be ready? As if he's taken, like, commissions or something from somebody even though they're supposed to be secret i think yeah so like why would you want the I, website to like i don't know i was wondering that too i was like wait so you like so you want people to know about this like what the fuck i thought www.michaelthearchangel.com get, send me your prayers and i'll send out my uh uh normal guys who yeah are fine don't worry about yeah. it to solve it also i am literally an angel I, what, I really want to know what his, like, design for the website is. What pages are there? Is there a, is there a gallery? Perhaps some uh, yeah. headshots? <laughs> yep, of all the angels, but they're just, like, a video VP, present- <laughs> assistant vice president. Like, like. A, a PowerPoint or video presentation, perhaps? Or demo? Like, what? Well, yeah, I need w- to know what's on the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, what's, what's the demo? Like, the Viking angels all go, <laughs> and, like, yeah. invite someone? Like, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, and then, yeah, they have this little lemon meeting. Lemon scent warnings or something? I... Yeah, I don't know. They have this little meeting and they talk about how, how bad ISIS is. And they're like, oh, is ISIS not the greatest threat equal only to the Nazi Holocaust or the evil Roman Empire? And I was like, you mean the Roman Empire that spread Christianity everywhere? Like, what? Yeah. And yeah, and th- so they go on and he's like, oh, mass murders, beheadings, and rapes all in the name of some distorted religious belief. And again, my note was, oh, you mean Christianity? Uh, yeah, uh, it, yeah, yeah, guys, yeah. Y'all aren't immune from that. <laughs> yeah, so this book definitely has like a bit of a slant, although the main character doesn't seem guilty of it, but there's uh, like her mother or mother-in-law or stepmom or something has some really like bigoted, shitty, racist things to say at the beginning of the book when they're talking. Oh, and yeah. And Andrea's kind of like, oh, fuck, this is terrible. Straight up says towel heads, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. But a- Andrea doesn't really shut her down. She just like is annoyed about it, but doesn't do anything to address it. So I do feel like this book has, uh, yeah, it's got a bit of a racist, like anti Muslim slant, which I super don't appreciate. Uh, I'm sure most people wouldn't. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah. What were we just talking about right now? We, we kind of jumped. We're time traveling like Nut does in the thing <laughs> no, in the no, book we're, here. No, no, no. We were just talking about how the book starts. Like Andrea goes to Nut to find Celie, her sister who's been kidnapped by ISIS. Nut uh, doesn't really want to take on the job, but does. Uh, they go to the. Well, Nut wants to do the job on his own, but Andrea is being. Uh, I don't know, an uppity woman or whatever, however the book puts it. Um, She's and she, stubborn and, like, she just has to be there and Nut just lets her go along because, like, she smells like coconuts, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, and she insists on going with him. Uh, and it's really funny because she she uh, she uh tells her boss, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to need some time off to go and find my sister. And, uh, and she's like, it should only take a few days. And I was like, oh, yeah, got to infiltrate ISIS and rescue my sister. Yeah, four days tops. Four <laughs> just, days. That's all yeah. I need. Give me a long weekend, boss, and I'll be, I'll yeah. be back on Tuesday. I, like, look, what? I just got to run, pick up my sister from a compound that she's isolated and surrounded by men with guns in. 
don't sweat it. Me and my buddy Nut are going to just take care of it real quick. Yeah, and they're in Pennsylvania, right? They're in Pittsburgh yep. or Philly? Philly, yeah, I think. Philadelphia. So Andrea lives in Philly. That's like where fucking fuckface is, Newt is right now. Uh, yeah. So they have to go all the way to Montana, which is, you know, at least a day of travel, right? Like, you know, getting a last minute flight and fucking going over there, the drive yeah, in there. And, they, and they, they bother to fly over there, even though Newt definitely has like transport abilities oh teleportation yeah, abilities. yeah but for some reason they take a plane because question mark what another put it on the list of fucking i don't questions. i think like no didn't reveal his vangelness to her quite yet that's true um and so they go to montana because you see isis has uh set up shop in a dude ranch and is operating like a couple's resort of some kind but is actually isis which is just not a thing ISIS would ever do. Honey, like, uh, did I, you like, see the brochure for this class here? Uh, death to all infidels? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> and they literally say that when they go there and the, you know, it's like deserted, there's like a chalkboard that literally has shit like that. It's like salsa <laughs> dancing, death to all infidels at two, followed by cooking beheading. with Mark. Like, yeah, yeah, seven, intro to beheading. <laughs> like, and and I just feel like if you're really trying to recruit people into into some like sketchy alternate uh i don't know way of living and belief system you don't just open with that because most people are going to be turned off by it like also you know getting go for like the resort crowd probably not your best tactic they're on vacation they have enough money to go do that you really want your like disaffected isolated lonely people yeah like you know, fucking Becky and Doug who are going to ride horses for the weekend don't want to join ISIS, and no amount of beheading 101 is going to get them to do that. So, oh, but it's like, such a nice beheading. Look, they got, like, a nice little guillotine. <laughs> oh, look, we're, we're just beheading a chicken today, honey. That's it. It's just about cooking chickens. It's not about beheading infidels. <laughs> don't worry. You know, and, and so I, the whole concept is just patently absurd. It's not believable in any sense. Um, So they get there. You know, everyone's gone, and Newt is like, ooh, I sense danger. My fucking vampire dick staff is twingling, or whatever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I smell lemons. Uh, yeah, I think, I, sm- really I, just- I think that is literally what it is. Yeah. Oh, no, no, he sees the goo. There's, like, these puddles of goo everywhere that are apparently oh, yeah. left by the demons. And, um... No one's anytime there. So, did, does he like flip out anytime someone sprays like a citrus like room deodorizer or anything? He's like the demons, <laughs> the lucifers. Like no, yeah, no, every... I just like blew a fart a second ago. I'm every... trying to help you out. <laughs> yeah, every clean bathroom is is just like <laughs> anathema to. Um, so they go there and it's like, oh shit, the demons are helping ISIS. Like that's why this is happening because there, you know, there's another part of this book that's all about the demon horde. You know, they're the and antithesis. Jasper. Yeah, what the fuck is up with the names in this book? Jasper, the evil ultimate Lucifer, who doesn't even confront anyone in, in any nope. of the main... Jasper is wholly on his own at all times. He, like, interacts with some of the other Lucifer characters for, like, a little bit, and then he's never seen again. He never confronts anyone. Much like anything else in this book, there's, like, a, like a dash of conflict, maybe somewhere a little bit for a second, but then it is either immediately resolved, doesn't wrap up, or we just it just doesn't matter. Right. Like, okay, so for example, the scene we're talking about now, where they go to the ranch expecting conflict, expecting to like meet up, you know, meet these ISIS people and rescue Celia, and no one's there. And they just kind of walk around, and then, you know, demons show up, but and, and Nut fights like two of them, and then they teleport. Like, yes. you didn't even have to fight those two. You could have just teleported. Yeah. Because he, like, went out to fight them and then retreated back again. And it was like, you could have just teleported out of there. Um, so, I don't know. There, Like, there isn't ever, like Chris is saying, there's really never a sense of true conflict because the characters have these, like, get out of jail free cards that they can just pull, like, teleportation and, like, immortality and, and you know, super strength and all this shit. So it's just, like, kind of lame and not really that fun. There's um, not even, like, a give and take between Andrea and Nut because, like, maybe at first she's, like, a little of the Tsundere anime girl type where she's, like, calling him an idiot and hitting him on the arm and trying to pretend she doesn't like him. But then, like, as soon as they time travel back and there's enough sexual tension, they just get it on immediately. It's all just hunky-dory. So, that like, there's not even any tension there. That's interesting. Yeah. Um. Sorry. Could you explain what Tsundere is? Because I had no idea when you said the word to me. Um, maybe explain um, that for our listeners who aren't anime people. 
uh, Tsudari is like the concept of an anime character, usually a lady who is hides the fact that they re- are really into someone. Uh, dere dere being sort of a, a Japanese word for like heart. It's like an onomatopoeia for heartbeat, as if you're in, enamored with someone. Oh. And then I think sun sun is has something to do with like seeming aggressive or cold at first. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I'm sure some weebs will correct us in the comment section or in an email, uh, and we can like elaborate on that later. But basically, someone that acts like they don't like you but is really super into you at okay. first. Also, the fact that she says idiot and hits him a lot is like super weeb alert to me because that's what Sundari characters do all the time is they literally hit the male character and call him an idiot all the time that's funny because i'm pretty sure this lady isn't a weeb and if she is she's a very secretive one because she's like a 60 year old housewife who was <laughs> maybe she's just well really she used into... to be yeah she used to be like an editor or something and now she's i don't know she's won a bunch of awards for her writing which i find hilarious yeah that, um, i don't i would not want to receive any of those awards yeah um and anyway back to the story so they you know then the, it like the book after Andrea and the time travel, um, Nut realizes he made a mistake somehow, uh, and they end up back in 850 AD in the Norse lands, uh, where he's originally from, and doesn't know how to get them back. Uh, so then the book cuts to the demons, and you learn that they have this, like, evil ice palace beyond Svalbard. And I honestly was like, what the fuck is beyond Svalbard? So if you don't know what Svalbard is, it's an island, it's a little grouping of islands, um, well past Norway, but they're it's part of like Norwegian territory, I think, still. Um, and beyond that, I had to actually consult a map because I literally didn't think there was anything beyond that. Uh, there's like this tiny cluster of Russian islands, so I guess that's where this evil hell fortress is. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's the I mean, Russians. Of course, it wouldn't Surprise. show up on Google Maps or anything, you know, like of course they would hide it with their evil demon powers. Oh, yes. And yeah, what is it with ice palaces in for hell demons? This is a thing we've seen in other books too, like in Maradonia, isn't that a thing? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like it's been in other stuff too. So, I don't know. They they can't choose. They have to have both extremes apparently. You're hot all the time. You want to cool off sometimes, man. You know, like you got to have one to appreciate the other, I guess. Yeah. Although like these demon scenes, they really don't have any bearing on the story like there's one that's like a double agent that wants to become a Vangel. Uh, his name is Zebulon. And there's a little bit to, of a to do with like him kind of like relaying information back to the Vangels or like helping Nut out for a little bit. But it doesn't really amount to much of anything at all because it's not like he actually. We'll get to that later. But there's a, there's a, there's a demon Lucifer character who pops up sometimes for reasons that have nothing to do with anything. Yeah, um, and, and so, you know, the, there's, like, these little parts about the demons, and, I mean, I feel like, taken out of context, the silly demon council stuff would be funny if it was written as, like, a weird SNL skit or something. Yeah, Because sure. it, it is kind of silly, and, like, the author loves her, like, shitty puns and, like, ho-ho, like, very obvious jokes, like, probably the Holocaust, which demons preferred to call the holy cause. Talk about uh, evil! Uh, like, yeah. like, uh, like, there's always... not make Holocaust jokes like that. Yeah, please. like, you know, there's always, like, a dad doing finger snaps and points at you at the end of every <laughs> yeah. joke. Like, that's how the jokes are in this book. Um, yeah, also, like, Jesus Christ, you don't need to fucking joke about the Holocaust. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Uh, and, I don't know, this author also, I feel like, to prepare for this book a part of what she did was just write little like little pop culture details on pieces of paper um fold them all up put them in a bag shake it and then just pull some out because like you get like true religion skinny jeans and then like the vikings tv show and fucking lizzie borden like yeah random celebrity cameos from like (laughs) celebrities from like 20 to 30 years ago or something like fucking pete townsend apparently andrea used to date pete townsend from the who yeah. I think? Wait, did you say she did or Seely did? No, uh, no uh, she did. Andrea did. Yeah, which is weird because she brings up the fact that he was arrested for child pornography, but like, I'm pretty sure that would no have big happened. Deal. Like, you know, well, <laughs> everyone's like... had an ex-boyfriend arrested for child porn. <laughs> well, no, she's just like, uh, she's just like, oh, that creep, creepy Pete, ha ha. Like, I, I don't know what she was getting at there. It was very strange. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's the Lizzie not... Borden cameo, who's a cook in, like, uh, the Vangel headquarters or something. Yeah, Lizzie Borden is also a vampire. She's, like, the vampire angel housemaid, which I was like, what the fuck? Why? <laughs> Why? Like, and then no Jasper sense. pretends to be John Wayne for four pages. Oh, yeah, John Wayne. Yeah, it just, like I said, it's no like she just, she just picked, like, just picked random pop culture <laughs> shit, put it in a bag, and shook it up, and just picked All right, it out. Well, like, let's see who's coming out today. Uh, uh uh, 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 Danny DeVito is uh, the uh, the the clerk, the front desk secretary, <laughs> yeah. and uh, who? Okay, who's uh, running the the auto mechanic uh, Vangel shop? It's uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I sure. Why not? <laughs> I mean, but seriously, it's just it's it feels very nonsensical she doesn't build a convincing world uh everything's very silly but not in a truly funny way just kind of in an awkward yeah dad jokey kind of way it's it's not great um there yeah, were so yeah I, I was gonna continue like the the middle part of this book is pretty much andrea nut hang out in his castle while he deals with the famine that's been come that's incoming because he wasn't around for a week and everyone forgot to hunt or something oh yeah uh, um so yeah so they get trapped in 850 ad because i don't know his like fucking teleporter jewels or like not i don't know he doesn't he even just know. doesn't want to try he's like oh it's too risky i'm not gonna bother because we got no. sent back here yeah well he thinks that michael is he thinks it's like god's will basically that they got fucked up and stuck in 850 again and yeah it turns out where whenever they bounce back in time his people think he's only been gone for like um two weeks or a month yeah like or a two week months or, two. or something i don't know it's not a very long period of time it's somewhere between two weeks and two months i can't remember and yeah like chris said there's like a famine going on and apparently there this famine was going on while he was there but he was like a gluttonous asshole in his you know original life um and you know he talks about trying to redeem himself and shit um and so yeah as chris pointed out these people are in a famine and they just like don't know to hunt until Nut shows up and he's like hey everyone go out and try to catch some rabbits and they're like oh shit yeah that sounds like a good idea yeah and like, it, like, what? it works I mean, so, sure, but it, but they're like, oh, all hell, Nut and Mistress Andrea telling us to get off our asses and hunt a thing. Like, what? Also, and, Andrea showed us how to make donuts. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Um, So I'm not sure if anyone had retained this from my reading of the back of the book, but food is a huge part of this book, like so large of a part that I got tired of reading about cooking scenes and menus because many of the chapters open with menus and it is not as cute and fun as it might sound. No, it, it's, uh, it's not actually like a quite recipe. Annoying. It just, it's just like a list of food to start off the chapter that's like maybe vaguely thematically relevant, but I skipped over them by the time I hit the third one. I was like, I'm not going to read just a list of this shit because it, it offers nothing. It offers nothing, not even flavor. That the, somehow the food <laughs> lists offer no flavor. Yeah, I mean, you know what? It's it's like she got the food stuff kind of right, I think. Um, although we're gonna talk about the language stuff. Oh man, I I went on a fucking tear about the language shit in this book. But the food seemed like kind of fine, you know. Like she she talks about like uh sort of like more traditional old um norse dishes and stuff i'm trying to find an example of one of these fucking menus but it's like i don't know and, and i got yeah. one you want me to read one uh yeah why don't, why don't, or i'll read the oh i got the viking feast i can read that okay yeah do the big one um <clears throat> spit roasted wild suckling boar reindeer steaks sliced cold hokor which is rotten shark oat crisped herring Eel and dill cream sauce, pigeon pie, svio, which is boiled sheep's head, pickled boar's feet, mutton with mustard chestnut dressing, lampreys, brutzbrunger, which is pickled ram testicles and whey pressed cakes, lutefisk, manchet bread, butter, horseradish, pickles, gamelost, which is stinky cheese, uh, shir, which is, uh, it says cheese, but it's, it's considered a yogurt. Moving on. Fennel salad, which is just fennel salad. I don't know why. Like, some of the words are not English for no reason. Pea and ham hock stew. Nettle Wait. soup with hard-cooked <laughs> oh, gulls oh, eggs. Oh, I thought you meant pea like urine for a second. <laughs> I was like, wait, pea and ham stew sounds I mean, disgusting. Eh, that's <laughs> probably fine. <laughs> <laughs> Boiled onions and venison gravy. Parsnips and cabbage porridge. Stewed lingonberries. Honey and hazelnut oatcakes. 
dried apple crumbles, and gingered pears with red currants. Mead, ale, imported grape wine from Francia. While supplies last. So, like, a ton of the chapters open with menus, and then... Like, why do I give a fuck? Why yeah, do I, I give know. a fuck with then, some, well, that you had your piss ham stew at the front yeah. of the piece? <laughs> yeah, and then there's, like, a bunch of details about cooking. Like, the, I think there's literally a whole chapter and half about Andrea fucking cooking in the 850 AD kitchen. And she's just like, oh, and then I milled the acorns into flour. And then I fucking made some honey reduction. And then I was, like, super cool and, like, taught the, the lady chef how to, like, make her soup last long and like it's ugh. not like again this has no bearing on anything it's not even like they have like hot food sex later on or something yeah, yeah like i i mean that kind of would have been more thematically important than like yeah like not even like strawberries and cream i mean i guess they're in 850 or something but like whatever you know yeah. honey and dates and figs i don't know fucking like you can theme it up a little bit but not even that so why do I give a fuck what they're eating? Why do I give a fuck what Andrea's cooking? I know they have a famine and that's like kind of a conflict, but it's not really at all because as soon as Noot sends anyone out on a hunt, they're fine. And so th- there's no tension to anything. I'm really upset about this book now, Paris. I yeah. just noticed. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it would have been fine if they were like, oh, Andrea's a cook. This is a time of famine. She's actually quite resourceful. And like, like if they had done a little bit of that, it would have been fine. But just getting beaten over the head with a menu every other chapter was just like, fuck, I don't care. And does she even really like give them anything to make things last longer besides like, oh, you can flour up the stew a bit or something? Like, Yeah, I mean, she teaches them, like she suggests that you can, you know, grind acorns into flour, which you can do. Uh, and she helps the, oh, she, she just tells them to be more creative with how they're using like parts of animals like instead of just like throwing the bones to the dog she's like no put the bones in the stew and take out the marrow and like that's smart but but i also feel like they would have known that yeah they're all I'm, I'm pretty people sh- yeah, <laughs> they would I, they wouldn't know how to throw the fucking bones in the pot to make it flavorful that's not like some modern age shit <laughs> that's yeah if anything that's like the oldest of age shit <laughs> yeah. so i yeah so that didn't make any sense like it would it, like her her teaching them how to make donuts fine totally yeah, oh, get yeah, that sure. that but that's is... not appropriate in a famine i'm pretty no. sure um and so yeah there's all this like food stuff happening and then all right we're gonna come to my the thing that okay you were most angered by the food i was most angered by the linguistic problems in this book and the fucking uh okay so in the book they go back to 850 AD in the norse lands uh-huh Somehow, Andrea can just understand everyone without a problem. And she <laughs> yeah, even no, remarks. She even makes a remark. not a hiccup. Yeah, she goes, everyone's speech is so strange here, and yet I can understand. Why is that? Some magic angel trick? And It's Nook not that, like, though. It's no, not Nook, even that. <laughs> and Nook goes, oh, Old Norse and, you know, Old English were basically mutually intelligible. And, like, if you know modern English, like, you'd understand that. So it tracks. And I was like, fuck No. Fuck no (laughs) on so many levels. So, all right. So there's like, there's like a lot of scholarly debate. Well, not scholarly debate, but like there's, there's a little bit of, um, back and forth over how mutually intelligible old Norse and old English were. So, and and we're talking about 850 here. So I actually read an entire monograph (laughs) on this topic (laughs) by two scholars (laughs) because I was so in because I read it and immediately knew something was wrong. I mean, obviously we all know something is wrong when someone who knows modern English can suddenly understand old Norse in 850. But like, I felt like there was more wrong and I believe I was right. So, um, according to the scholars that, you know, whose piece I was reading, old Norse and old English were not as mutually intelligible as this author suggests, especially 850. Um, because by 850, like, things weren't, I don't know, like, old, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find a way to, like, eloqu- eloquently explain this, but, um, by the late, like, by that time, basically, you had the Saxons and, you know, Scandinavian people fighting and stuff and, like, l- l- you know, kind of, like, sacking, uh, similar areas and blah, 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 but, like, they weren't, they weren't that close together in 850 like the two languages did merge to become middle english but that didn't happen until like hundreds of years later so in 850 sure you might have had some words that were kind of similar but like there's no way that there's a lot of words turns out and like you gotta know a lot of them to know a language yeah there's no way they would be mutually intelligible where like someone 
you know, a, a person who speaks Old Norse meeting, meeting someone who speaks Old English for the first time would be able to have a conversation. Like, through prolonged contact, the languages did merge and and basically kind of coalesced into Middle English. But, like, that didn't happen until, like, 1170, tw- like, 11-something. So we're talking 850, like... They were, okay, so they were mutually intelligible. I'm sorry, by 1070. <laughs> 1070. 850, we're talking like 220 years before that point. Like, no way. I mean, and not to mention, like, all right, so so all here's right, another thing. Hey, all right, no, 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 I no, no. A, shut up, Chris. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. I'll let you go. Yeah. I'll let you go. So, sorry, I'm real mad. So, um. I'll step back here. <laughs> no, I'm, sorry, I, I'm not actually mad at you. I'm just being silly. What, what was the question that you had? Sorry. Uh, I was going to say, like, there's two interesting things while you're in the middle of the rant here that uh, the cook, Gildra, I think, or something, like, she's she's written with, like, an accent, which means that Andrea could, like, detect a difference of accent in the way she spoke from, like, how everyone else in the keep was speaking, because they spoke regular plain English in the dialogue, but Gilda yep. had, like, an accented way that she was written. Yeah, and... and also, yeah. I have a theory here... Is that okay? So you, you might be right, but in this world, Andrea getting sent back in time seeded uh, the language with modern English, and therefore there's a time paradox or something. I don't know. I'm trying to. Help oh my you god! Out I don't know. You might be right. Um, but anyway, uh, so this doesn't. So basically, what I'm saying is this doesn't make sense. Um, and it gets even worse because when he was like, "Oh, we went back to 850 in the Norse lands," I was like okay, well, maybe they're in uh, a Norse-held area that does speak in, like, Old English, which was a small possibility. Like, they could have been in, like, I don't know, Normandy or, like, somewhere in England. I I assumed I was like, oh, maybe they're actually in some part of England that is held by the Norse at this point, because that was very possible. I mean, the Dane law wasn't passed until, like, 878, So we're in 850. So there's, yeah, there's probably plenty of, there's plenty of Viking settlements um, at that point. So I was like, okay, they're just in England, but in a Norse held land. No, they're, he basically says at some point that they are in Norway. And, and the reason this makes no sense, or, or I guess the reason the dialogue makes no sense is because Nut is constantly using old English words. Like, yep, like I mean, like swiving, even... which is a weird word that I didn't believe was a word, but apparently it's a word. <laughs> but like even his name with the C instead of the K, like I don't think by 850 it would have been anglicized that way. It's too early. And he keeps using. Oh, my God. She keeps using the word. I love praise. that this is like what pissed you off the most. Like, I want you to write like an angry email to this author. Dude. It's just all this stuff. All right. Well, first of all, I'm not an expert. You know, I read a monograph. I read some other articles. I'm pretty sure I'm right. If any of you out there are actually uh germanic linguistic scholars please let me know if i'm wrong but i i feel like i'm pretty right um but he keep like in the book nut keeps referring to pants as braise 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 oh my god if i see that word ever fucking again i'm gonna tear the page that it's on out of the book and burn it like I, that, it, they that, use that's how that, i felt about swiving paris yeah they use the word braise so many times and it just means pants in anglo-saxon but like why would he like if he is a if he is a Norwegian Viking who is living in Norway, he would he has no reason to change his native tongue to that of some people who he has no contact with because he's not one of the people that is going over to fucking England. Like, yep. it makes no goddamn <laughs> sense. Oh, fuck. Fuck. I'm so mad. OK, <laughs> oh, God. well, that was <laughs> Paris's like solid five minute linguistics anger time. Um, yeah, anyway. If you bye. want more, more sick rants, <laughs> contribute to our Patreon. <laughs> oh, FYI, Middle English uh, didn't fully develop. Not even develop. in the middle, it turns out. It was didn't, in the north. <laughs> no. So Middle English didn't fully develop until 1300, but yeah, anyway. Anyway. They fuck. should call it Upper English because, I, I'm sorry, I'm just making facts up now yeah, at this sorry, point. Yeah, sorry, that was, that was, uh, my, <laughs> that was yeah. my angry rant. Um, so let's let's take a hard turn from the intellectual to the base by talking about the sex scenes in this oh, book. Oh, no! So like I said, I was really dismayed when we got the creepy staring at you in the dark masturbation scene because... No, it's fine because Andrea's totally into him by no, this but, point is how no, it's written. That's how Chris, it's presented. Chris, we gotta talk about this. All right, you're you're you are a straight dude. I'm a straight woman. Yes. 
would this be an okay thing for either of us to have happened to us? Like, no, exactly. No, no. Like if I was asleep and the guy I was seeing was like, like I woke up and he's just staring at me in the dark, jerking it. Like I would be fucking freaked out. Because- I mean, okay. Well, if, if we're talking, if that's the situation, like someone you're in a long-term relationship with, if well, it's no, a disgust- no. Ah, yeah, yeah, I might be a little freaked out by it because I'd be like, why are we not like, why are we not just having sex? This is weird. Why are you sure, just looking maybe, at you know, me in he, the dark? You know, he knows you've had a long day. You just got home from work. You've been complaining all the time about it, but Hey, you look really good in, in that nightgown. And he's just not going to wake you up. Uh, you know, again, it really depends on the, the couple that is doing That's it. If it's true. a long-term thing, true. whatever. You can set up consent agreements for pretty much anything. Okay, yeah, you're, but, you're but right. But this is you're not right. what's happening here. That's not what's happening here. I guess that's if, what I'm saying. If yeah, we had like... just met and one of us did that to the other one, that would be fucking cops called time. <laughs> yeah, like, if, if you, like, this is, like, their first night together, right? Or their second? Yeah, this is their first. First night together? Second I, night? First night in the, in, eight, in 850. I think they might have, like, took the plane to Montana overnight or something. Okay, fine. Second night together, and he's hovered over her in the dark, staring at her while he's jerking off. Like, I actually whoa. think he was sitting in a chair at the time, from what I, I remember. I he was reading. standing. That made no, it No, I remember him me. sitting in a chair across from her and doing it. So, oh, you know. well, I found the note, so I can check. Uh, okay awesome i highlighted um, the passage where he starts to describe jerking off and i wrote could have done without that because <laughs> i was I, not can ready I say, for Paris, it uh, i, I kind of like reading the book after you get to it which is fine now because i'm like two behind you or something at this point anyway uh i really like the notes you leave because sometimes it'll just, there'll just be a whole like giant passage that's <laughs> terrible highlighted and then I click the note in there, and it's just a little frowny face, and it's really spot on <laughs> to how I feel about a lot of the time. Yeah, I think I try to, you know, when I'm making notes, I try to be like, okay, I'm not just making these for me. I'm also making notes for Chris, so he can have a more a happier time reading this terrible you, book. You are indeed. We're a good team. We're a good team. Yeah. Um, anyway, so back to the, the naughty stuff here, because that's really what you're buying this book for. I'm guessing if, if there's a demographic for this shit... Um, so that's fine. Andrea, like, wakes up in the middle of it anyway, or after it, and she's like, oh, that was cute. Uh, maybe, no, no, no. You know. No, that's not what happens at all. Oh, shit. I thought she was she... fine with it. Nope. Uh, I have a note. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, I had a note, but, oh, here we go. Um, oh, fuck. Why did it not take me to the right? Oh, yeah. Uh, she wakes up, and, uh... She starts freaking out because she goes, are you serious? She didn't know whether they had made love or not. And it was like, you were just asleep. He didn't drug you. Like, I'm, you weren't drinking. I'm pretty sure you would know if you guys had had sex. Like, I don't even understand why they have this little tiff where she's like, oh, my God, did we have sex? Like, there's literally no reason that she would have that thought. It made no sense to me why they even had that exchange. Like... I don't get it. Also, the fact that she refers to it as, like, did we have sex? Because, like, I get maybe she could be worried about, like, oh, she woke up naked and he was in there. Maybe he assaulted her or something would be the worry. But she phrases it as, did we have sex? Which implies some kind of consent or, like, maybe she got drunk or something. But they she didn't. Well, so. yeah. And I mean, like, if she just was having a, a normal sleep, I'm pretty sure she would know if she was being assaulted. Like, it didn't. It didn't make any sense. Uh, I don't know. Moving on. My next note is that the author uses the uh, racial slur Eskimos to describe something. Cool. Thanks. We needed more of that in this book. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, my there- favorite scene, my favorite part of any of the intimate scenes, it's like, okay, so it's like maybe the first like makeout session that they have. They might have kissed or something before, but there's like the first serious makeout session that they have. Uh, there's a part of it where it, it <laughs> the author describes it like, oh, the making out was so intense that they didn't want to like break the kiss so oh, much I that remember this, it was yeah. like they were. Oh, it felt like we were passing one breath back and forth between each other. Yeah, and <laughs> so they, I kept and picturing cartoonishly like <laughs> one person's cheeks like super puffed up and then passing it back and forth, and the, the cheeks just alternately getting puffier. Yeah, like on one of those, side. like one of those nineteen thirties <laughs> Disney drawings, like yeah. with a huge. Cheek. Okay, but my favorite part actually was the fact that the next paragraph begins with Andrea saying. She felt disoriented and dizzy, maybe because you were passing the same fucking breath back and forth. You fucking idiot. It's just CO2 at this point. You're yeah. suffocating yourself. Yeah. So they're suffocating each other to make out, which is just stupid. Like, I mean, at that point, 
I, I feel like animals are smart enough not to do that. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Um, and then she calls it like whisper kissing and talks about how like great it is. And it what is whisper is, kissing? I think that's what they were referring to that weird breath sharing thing as. I thought the breath thing was like a metaphorical thing, though. Like I was picturing a cartoonish thing. No, that's in literally happening. They are literally <laughs> choking each other to death by making out. I don't know why the author thinks this is a Jesus. thing. Jesus. I've heard about being bad at kissing, but that's, like, really on another level. <laughs> so bad at kissing, you kill the person you're kissing and yourself. Yeah. It's a murder-suicide kiss. <laughs> oh, oh. That, nearly ha- that would have been an exciting event in this book if they, like, almost killed each other. And, like, that was the dramatic tension because there's fucking nothing else in here that's dramatic tension. <laughs> Oh, Detective Brown, what do we got here? Another murder-suicide <laughs> kiss. Oh, you no. You know, these kids, they get together at night, they forget to breathe, and the next thing you know, it's just a tragedy. You don't even, you... even wake up in the morning. All right, it's McGruff the crime dog here. If your <laughs> friend tries to get you to huff their mouth and not breathe again, you leave that area immediately, and that person is not your friend. <laughs> Remember, kids, come up for air. It's only safe. <laughs> Cool only you can prevent safety. only you can prevent murder suicide kisses <laughs> i don't know what acts i'm doing what am i doing anyway oh god i'm i'm crying all right it's already happening um oh yeah and then there was <laughs> like this is a little uh, this isn't a sex thing but i just saw a note that i made about how like when they time traveled of course like all of their physical possessions went with them and i guess uh-huh. the uh i guess uh uh cell phone still had battery life and somehow Verizon signal strength reaches back centuries yeah. and he had an not email really he message. just like gets he gets like one email like yeah. it's, it's enough to get one email or something he before got he got one gets... email and the email was from I think his brother Vikar yeah and it says Vikar at hotvangels.com <laughs> I guess wait is that the website for Michael is... I mean, what if, yeah, what if Does Michael have a website called Hot Vangels? I hope so. Oh, God, I hope so. Oh, I um, dare you, I dare you to type that into your browser right now. And so, I am not typing hotvangels.com into my browser. I have enough questionable shit in my browser history because of Terrible Book Club. I will not let it go this far. Um, and then, like, the other, oh, that's right. So back to all the, like, like the love, like, the sex scenes and stuff. And they start talking about life mate shit, and that's, you know, that's, like, part of the whole scent thing. Um, and apparently... Uh, Paris, not to interrupt, but I'm happy to report that hauntfangels.com is not a thing. It's available, though, if you want it. Oh, my God, it's available. All right. All right. <laughs> New Patreon goal. Get enough money to buy hauntvangels.com and put whatever we want on there. Oh, man. That, that should be our, our actual website. Like, every time we have to, to <laughs> give someone the link to the podcast. <laughs> Uh, I know it says hotvangels.com, but trust me, it's a podcast. <laughs> yeah, I made sure that website when well. I was a kid. Uh... <laughs> it's my old email. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so it turns out that if you are life mates with another person, when they die, so do you. Yeah. Take that. Makes sense. Like, what? I guess it's I guess it's better than like the human dying 100 years in and then the Vangel being like, all right, time for another one. Yeah, I guess, but it still kind of blows. Like, that kind of sucks. Yeah, it um, really does. And I guess, and, like, who is, you know, is there com- some kind of fate, like, tying your strings together? Like, who is, like, managing these life mate really? I guess God, because this is a Christian book. Never mind, I answered my own question. Yeah, yeah it, um, he's omnipotent. He can do whatever he wants, and, like... Um. Oh, right, and also, apparently, so back to the sex scenes. Apparently, yeah. uh, dicks get bigger the longer you don't have sex. That's I a mean, thing in this book. a little bit. I don't think that's real. I, I mean, like, I think, think so. of it this way. Like, I mean, you also have to not be jerking off, but your erection can get harder, and that does make it a little bigger. Seriously? I mean, do, I does guess, your boyfriend... I guess I'm learning something. Is, he, is your boyfriend the same size uh, one way as the other? Oh, my God. I'm not... We're not I talking know. about this. I know we're not... But, like, <laughs> listen, Paris. Like, you've heard of Grower versus Shower, right? Yeah, but that's, like... That never, oh my god, never So mind. if you haven't had sex in a while or jerked off in a while, you get a harder dick because the blood is like more in there. I don't know how it I, works. Dude, but... yeah, I don't think I don't think either of us are qualified to speak about this. It struck me well, as strange. I I'm a little bit qualified having a penis here, so <laughs> That's 
true. I guess you're more qualified than I am. I am. Uh, in fact, you have sorry. zero qualifications to talk about this. So yeah, perhaps I, you should defer I'm sorry, to the I didn't, expert in the role. <laughs> I didn't mean to pull the rug out from under you there. I am uh, just saying, perhaps you can learn something here in that, like, kind of, yes. And if he's been celibate for, like, hundreds of years... I don't yeah. know, maybe. Okay, okay, that's all right. fine. I concede this point. But um, also, though, but but he jerked off, like, yesterday, so. Okay, yeah, that's true. Okay, I don't concede my point. You just proved me right. All right, fuck well, this. At the same, Well, uh, at the same time, Paris, if you don't jerk off for a while, it can still, the effects can last past one time. Oh, God damn it, it's, fine, The organ's fine. a little weird, okay, you know? <laughs> fine, I don't this know enough about Chris's dicks. This has been Chris's penis Sorry, education okay? corner. Um, uh, don't ever stop by again, please. However, the next note I have on the first sex scene is his thighs spread between her spread thighs. And I was like, how are you both? How are you both spread there? That seems a little difficult. I don't know. Uh, Just they're both in super wide V formation. I guess one's just wider than the other. Uh, I don't know. It I seems think? weird. Uh, she refers to his dick as a dog on point, which I thought was like one of the most unsexy things I've ever read. Also peppermint stick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. She does refer to his dick as a peppermint stick. Um, This author seems to know very little about her own anatomy. So. Why is that, Paris? Well, when they're having sex, the main character notes that her clitoris felt wide open and vulnerable. (laughs) And I would just love to know why your clitoris is open. She's she's got like a a, a face hugger predator style clit that just like opens like wide like a flower, like the thing. Yeah, like, what? I don't understand I, we're I, getting I, that there. I think what she means is is maybe, like, it, it was open to attack, like, as in you're defenseless. Uh, you know, like, when, when, a, when a football receiver is wide open to receive the pass. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess if, if the clitoris is like a football, sure, <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, her clit's a football. We've solved that one, too. It's, it's either on. a football or a horrible space hell demon, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, and then, you know, there's more of this, like, this weird thing that we see in all these books where the woman wants to get fucked to the womb, which is actually not a safe thing to do and can kill it, you, so, like, also why? Also, it hurts. Why? I'm pretty yeah. sure that hurts. That sounds like it hurts. Yeah, that is not a good thing to do, ladies and gentlemen. Please, please don't do this. Uh, yeah, and, I and mean... And then the rest of the sex is like, oh, it's the most electric thing ever, and they had oh, yeah. mini comes all the time, and it was all over the place and so good, you guys. You guys, it was so good. It's like that's pretty much the the meat of that part of the book. Yep, uh, I think there's there's another sex scene later. It's pretty much the same, so I don't think we need to uh, go over that. Yeah, nothing interesting happens, and and then uh, <laughs> Princess Rainilda shows up, and she's a jealous bitch because she used to be betrothed to Nut. Except it doesn't really matter because she just like disappears near the end, or Nut just leaves. I, I forget. How, it doesn't matter. None of the conflict matters. Why uh, am I both? She, yeah, she gets uh, evaporated by one of the demons because that's what the demons do. When you are a ripe enough lemon, they come and squeeze <laughs> the juice out of you. And by that, I mean they literally make you disappear into the hell realm, leaving only your worthy worldly no, possessions. P- Paris, you go to the horrible castle named Horror because the evil villain Jasper really fucking sucks at naming evil castles turns out. Yeah, it's real dumb. Uh and you go into like this weird tube and you get I don't know, hell pickled and then like once <laughs> yeah. you're hellish pickly and I pickled hellishly enough or something. Uh, I think I had like one slave. of those pickles when I was in LA. It was an atomic pickle. <laughs> Ooh, I want an atomic pickle. Wait, what was it? What was it steeped in? Like like I don't I don't know. It, I got it alongside uh, the original uh, French dip sandwich. It was it was that I forgot what the name of the restaurant was exactly. Uh, Coles I think or something. Uh, sorry, it's I'm just like, like... Fr- It's where the French dip sandwich originated. They gave me a really spicy pickle. I'm making a joke about that. That's... Oh no, I'm just a fiend for spicy shit, you know me. So I was like, "Ooh, yeah. a hot pickle." Um but yeah, and then I don't know, yeah, the Reynilda thing is whatever. Uh, because she like please can you describe how did you view the conflict what was the arc of her character paris i mean i kind of figured she was just gonna be you know an agent of evil but then she ends up just getting destroyed by the demon so it like literally didn't matter i mean obviously Nut wasn't gonna like bed her or anything even though andrea was real worried about it and i was like why like he has no reason to do that like doesn't make any sense uh yeah i don't know it was just 
Let's name let's name some of like the issues that might be conflicts in this story and let's you can tell me if anything was resolved or like taken care of or like tied up in a knot. First of all, Seely on the ISIS thing. Nope, just kind of wrapped up off page in a fucking email. Oh yeah, that gets wrapped up right at the end. Yeah, that's true. The email from uh, Vicar at HotVangels.com, uh, that email actually said, oh, uh, we found that girl's sister, by the way. She's fine or something. Okay, and, so yeah, immediately that's out the window. How yep. about um, the famine? Oh, I mean, that's fine because the villagers are told to go hunt and then they hunt and they ration their non-hunting stuff and it is fine, I think. How about Jasper looking to implant Lucifiers in 850? Yeah, that doesn't really go so hot because they end up killing them and it's not really that dangerous. Except for the time where Nut uh, gets lost in the snow inexplicably. But that wasn't really because of a Lucifier or anything. He just, like, got disoriented. <laughs> yeah, he just fucking forgot where he was going. And then someone went out and dug him out of the snow and he just woke up. After, a, like, a fucking ice coma or something. So I guess Vangels are weak to cold. So I guess if the demons live in an ice palace, wouldn't I... Shouldn't you just do that? Shouldn't you yeah. just show up with an ice gun or something? It's yeah. not like the demons are against using modern stuff because they have human forms. And Zeb the demon has, like, a fucking Cuban hideaway. So they could totally use ice guns or, like, freezers or something, right? <laughs> so yeah, what the I... fuck is the point of anything in this I book? Why? No, Why? It really is, the like, this huge hodgepodge amalgamation of just anything you've ever even maybe faintly heard about in a fantasy romance book just all thrown in there plus a little bit of isis you know it's just like i don't <laughs> know and dash. then oh yeah and then there's the other like weird christian thing where andrea tells the viking women about like the rhythm method like oh, tracking yeah. their <laughs> menstrual cycles and like telling Explain. their men not to fuck them when they're fertile but like that doesn't like that doesn't work unless you're taking your temperature like a thing that they couldn't really do at that time and and logging it and even then you need like an algorithm to to fucking map it all out and shit like the, just the, takes nuts fucking Verizon iPhone or whatever it's got yeah, yeah. oh yeah Verizon service that stretches back centuries um yeah. um yeah and and I love that you know during the famine they're like how were they able to catch so much game in the midst of a famine i don't know because animals aren't crops like they're not <laughs> like the they're fam- still out like, there i mean unless unless it's one of those famines where it's like i, I don't know like even the wildlife the wild fauna and but it feels like they didn't dying. even go out to check like because no, it's they not didn't. like they have to trek super far it's like they go out like the first day and they catch like Two deer and a bear and a bunch of rabbits and fish. Like, so what the fuck were you guys even doing if you just didn't at least try to go outside yeah. and look for, like, a single deer? Yeah, didn't make any sense. And and they were also talking about how the hunger in the village, like, at the, at, like, Nutz estate, um, it, things were fine because, you know, the pe- at the, at the, like, estate or whatever you know they they have their stores and they're like the fancier people but out in the village things had gotten so bad that people's stomachs were swelling i mean that is an advanced stage of starvation like that is not that's like because your what is it like your liver swells or something uh, uh, i don't yeah i, I, don't I believe that. i i think so um but that's like an advanced stage of starvation that i feel like wouldn't be happening if it was just like a couple of weeks or a couple of months or something. I don't know. Um, doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah. and then, and then like they have this like Andrea nut or like, like if one of them is like, maybe we're life mates, the other one's like, fuck you, we're not life mates. And then if the other, but then they're like, maybe we are life mates. The other one's like, fuck you, we're not life mates. And it's like, what the fuck you both suggest. And also, deny this in equal measure and then they just finally are just like yeah whatever and it, i just don't get it like because this author has no idea how to write any kind of conflict or tension nope in the least nope at all and i also i hate all the little like things she adds that she thinks are like cutesy and norse like he calls uh no it's called andrea heartling and he's he says something like everything's oh, what a the ling. cloud if or you, whatever if you, yeah if, like, if you want to make something cute can't. and tiny you just add ling to it heartling girl ling oh, <laughs> girl's already small you don't have to add the ling to it i We're forgot just... girl ling fetch me the hammer ling it's the tiny hammer for really tiny screwlings <laughs> fetch me the fork ling it is the salad <laughs> fork 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. It doesn't make any fucking sense. How about uh, the like the sort of like the 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 inter- not like the chapter titles, but like these like little like headings that some sections get. Which, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but like the front half of the book doesn't have that many of them, and then the back half of it like really turns it up. I feel like. Uh, so here's a couple that I have in front of me. Uh, Yippee Kaye, get along, little doggies. Uh, demons. Dot. 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 Because by the way, every single one of these fucking things has at least one ellipses in it. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. How about home? Home on the range. Dot. 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 Yeah, it just seems like the book was very disorganized. It was as though the author didn't really do a lot of editing or anything, you know? It d- doesn't really make a lot Back of sense. Back to the future in reverse, dot, 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 dot. dot. Yeah, I mean, it's... A miracle just... worker she was not, dot, 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 dot. 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 <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm sorry. I'll just stop interrupting And you. you get an ellipsis, and you get an ellipsis, and everyone gets an ellipsis. Um, Yeah, I don't know. And then, like, towards the end of the book, uh, how does this... I don't know, like... Zebulon, like we said, is like this, you know, he's trying to play both sides here because he's he's a demon, but he really wants to be a Vangel, even though he's not a Viking. So this like, you know, you know, not not probably not going to happen, but he's been helping out the Vangels, you know, so he's hoping to get rescued. Uh, And like he and Nut have this weird moment where Jasper's like, let me take you to my uh, island getaway. And then there's like luau music in the background while they make like a nice dinner together and they're wearing yep. shorts and fishing and gardening. And it's just like, what the fuck? Like, why is this happening? I What? Like, they could because have just had Zeb a conversation. Was told to get a Sigurdsson or else they, like his, sh- his shit was done, according to Jasper. So Zeb runs and grabs Nut from 850. He just throws Andrea home, like just throws her back to, to her normal time takes Nut to his, like, little Cuban hideaway for 24 hours to have, like, a little fucking day trip and then, like, puts him in a force field for 24 hours but lets him go anyway? So why'd you put the force field up for 24 hours? Yeah, wait, was it Cuba? I don't know. It was was the Caribbean or Cuba. It was one of those. And so they have this, like, nice little couples vacation, Zeb and Nut. You know, they they – I'm not (laughs) even joking. Like, when I was saying they had – they prepared a nice dinner together and fished and wore shorts and flip-flops. Like, that actually happened. Yeah. It was, like, two – or a whole chapter or two of this, and it just felt very strange. I – I just really think that the island vacation was not necessary. <laughs> like I it really don't... not. Yeah. And, and again, and... why if 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 Zeb was just gonna like let Nut go back, why did he throw up a force field to keep Nut in for twenty four hours? Uh, I don't remember. I feel like there might have been a reason for it, but I, I don't recall. But in any case, Zeb gets found out at the end of the book, and Satan is torturing him for all eternity. So Zeb gets fucked. Um. And that's how that resolves. And yeah. by the way, it's not like the Lucifiers like continue chasing after Nut or something after that. It's just resolved as like, oh, Nut and Andrea are life mates now. The the end. Don't worry about anyone back at his estate. He left one of those guys in charge. It's fine now. He'll remember to tell everyone to hunt, I guess. Yeah, and and like yeah, like you said, I love how Zeb like he kidnaps Nut and instead of like, I don't know, killing Andrea or just leaving her there, yeah, he puts her back in, in Philadelphia and she wakes up in her apartment. And her sister is there and her sister's like, oh, the super let me in. Yeah, because you can just go to some house manager, like some property manager and be like, let me into my sister's apartment. Yeah, they're not going to do that. That's that's not a thing that happens. Yeah, momentarily <laughs> like, while we're on this little scene here, like, can, like, can I just talk about like one stupid little like romance novel thing that just, you know, it doesn't have to happen. When Andrea gets back and Celie come, finds her in the thing, she's coming out of the shower, of course, and she's like completely nude. For just, like, because it has to be sexy for some reason. Because she's a free reason. spirit, Because it has to be sexy. Like, Celie no. couldn't have just been, like, eating breakfast or, you know, like, coming in from being out for a second. She no, has to be she walking out of the shower naked. No, she had a tramp stamp, and she's had every color of hair, and, like, she's just so free. That's why. Anyway. <sighs> Continue. Yeah, but it's just a it's a stupid little like romance novel thing. Everything has to yeah. be a little bit sexy, even if the two characters involved don't have any sort. Of, obviously, they're sisters. You would hope. Who knows? Yeah, seriously, um, you know. And so her sister's fine. She's back in Philadelphia, and she's like, "Oh no!" I'm like, "I can't believe I can't believe I'm here like without him." And and she makes a note. She's like, "She'd been through hell for him for Nut." And I'm like, "You got time travel that had to cook a bunch of food." Fuck you. And you got, you like, have to pretty good sex, shit. too. So, like, yeah, honestly... and you got fucked a bunch. Like, real good in a hot tub. Like, <laughs> yeah. lady, 
You got to live as a Viking queen. Like, what? I don't understand how this is going through hell for someone. Like, she was never in any danger, really, except for the, like, when they were at the ranch and she thought maybe the demons might get them, but then she got rescued. So it was like, she didn't really go through anything significant. To- yeah. Yeah. I went through a hell of having baked treats that were homemade and having a bunch of sex <laughs> yeah. and also being treated like a princess. By Vikings. Yep. It was um, the so worst then, experience of my life. She, um, I don't know, for some reason she can't, I don't know, her, like, wallet got left in 850 or something, <laughs> yeah. so she can't access her money. Apparently she can't walk to a bank. I don't know. Um, yeah. And she's like, oh, thank God my dad gave me this $200 check for my birthday. Thanks, daddy. And I was just like, ugh, I hate this. And, and then she was like, well, I don't have an ID to cash the check. But then somehow she does. I don't remember how. Because um, she, it was like her boss will give it to oh, her. Oh, yeah, or something. Like you're giving your boss a check made out to you. So they're giving you like an early paycheck. But I then what does know. the boss do with that I, check fuck. that they can't do anything with? Well, you can sign a check over to somebody. That's a thing. But anyway. Oh, right. Yeah. I forgot Anyway, about that. she's like, I have to find Noot or or yeah I have to help him so she's like well I know his brother has a literal castle in Transylvania Pennsylvania of course um and so she says I did a google for Transylvania Pennsylvania <laughs> castle um and she gets in her car and drives to uh the castle and I don't know somehow all the other vangels like know about her and she gets let in and like everyone's there and like Nut is there oh boy looks like he figured out how to time travel back correctly uh even though so now i can get that cool vampire viking dick. yeah so then they're like so michael got another one for you we're life mates too and michael's like god damn it you fucking vikings and your goddamn marriages ah! um i don't know he's like mad for a second and then like i don't know she's hanging out in this castle or whatever, you know, this Viking vampire castle in Transylvania, Pennsylvania. With and Lizzie Borden, the cook. I was just going to say, and then she goes into the kitchen, and my last note is, I'm Lizzie Borden, LMAO. Because I was <laughs> yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. you got to be fucking kidding me. Like, get out of here. Ugh. Um, and that's yeah. pretty much how it wraps up, right? Just yeah. like... Well, and that ends Zebulon getting tortured for all eternity by Satan for betraying him. Uh, but I think that then segues into another book, right? Yeah, it, it's supposed like the Zebulon book because this is this book in a series about all seven of those brothers, and I guess we chose the very last one, which you would think would be more dramatic or something if it's a series. Like, wouldn't this be like the build up point? Yeah, this doesn't but seem no. like the last book. That's why I was so confused when I was like, "This is book seven? What? How? It nothing? Yeah, like you said, nothing is wrapped up. I mean, I assume she was just doing that so she could continue churning out these shitty books and like make more money off of them." Um, but who knows? Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, my verdict is don't read this book. Do not read it. It is this not is worth like your time. This is one of the worst ones. I, I would, yeah, like... I don't care if you like Vikings, if you like romance books. This is not for you. Don't read it. It's a waste of your precious several hours that it would I take would you to read it. I would rather read Midnight Sins again. Oh, I, I don't know, Chris. I don't know about that. I don't I know. I, I hate to say it, but I'd rather read this than Midnight Sins. <laughs> Probably because I'm like a, a right. like Scandinavian weeb, uh, but that's just me. <laughs> a weeb. Um, it's a, a weeb. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a weeb. <laughs> <laughs> I suck your lingonberries. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, right, I mean, well, that's that's all I have to say about oh, this book as well. No, I have one more thing. I forgot okay. at the beginning. Give Sandra, us the cherry on top, Paris. Um, Sa- Sandra Hill, the author, Sandra Hill, whatever. She has a dedication. I'm going to read this. This book is dedicated to my grandsons, Jefferson Hill and Max Casper Hill, who are, like me, descendants of that 10th century Norseman Rollo or Hrolf the Gunger, first Duke of Norsemandy, which later became Normandy. What's not to love about a Viking? Especially a Viking with a sense of humor, which they both have. I can't wait to see what they'll become when they grow up and go, a Viking. She uh, thinks she's a Viking. She thinks her and her sons are descended that's, from that's, Vikings. Ugh! That's what this is. Oh, so she like upset. built a whole identity around being like tenth Norse or something. You know, and, and you'd think she'd know more about this shit than you'd think she wouldn't have these linguistic problems that I'm pretty sure she has. Ugh, again, please correct uh, me if no, I'm wrong. No, she has a Viking helmet that she bought at the Ren Fair, Paris. So yeah. you know, cultured. Ugh. Anyway, 
yeah don't don't fucking read this um i don't think i don't think i have any in the notes um so i guess that uh that concludes our review of the angel war fangs uh by sandra hill don't read it uh so uh, at this point, we would just like to thank our patrons, Dari, Greg, Veronica, and Will. Thank you so much for your support. With your support, we have recently reached our first Patreon goal. We are indebted to you. Um, and Yay. as such, we are, we are, uh, as, as <laughs> such, we are actually paying one of our debts on the next episode. Ooh. So for episode 41, we are reading Veronica's choice of book. Uh, so we'll be reading, we're doing our patrons choice. So Veronica, we'll read your book for next time. Um, the next few books, um, we have, we've got some, uh, we got some spooky books set up for October, so, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's spooky time, so it's time to get all scary, spooky, yeah, monster mashing. Right, so, uh, we're gonna read Veronica's book for, uh, the first episode in October. Hers isn't spooky, uh, but then the following two in October will be spooky, uh, because of the way that our, uh, release schedule is, and just the way October is laid out this year, you're actually getting three episodes in October, so, woohoo. Wow-wee! Yeah. Look at us putting all this, at, I, we've, this is the 40th episode, Paris, we've read 40 books for this show. I mean, I've read 42 at this point. Like, oh, yeah, oh sorry, crazy. yeah, excuse me, I'm behind. <laughs> yeah, I, sorry, I've been on, like, a crazy reading tear, like, regular books and terrible books. I just, I can't stop myself lately. That's um, good. That, that's better yeah. than my tear recently of, uh... I, I, the past week for me has been a lot of editing drum patterns and stuff like that that my drummer came and laid down. It, it wasn't that bad. Like, he gave me, like, the human velocity data, but having to cut together all these takes and nudge them slightly to get them timed exactly where I want them is, like, it's fun to do, but also is very tedious and my brain is melting. Yeah, that sounds incredibly tedious. Um, I Let's see. The book I'm reading right now for fun is uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Uh, I think I've talked about wanting to read that before. I finally got it from the library. It's a, uh, it's kind of a dry biscuit at this point, but I'm only seven percent <laughs> through, so um, yeah. But I, I, I have faith that it'll get better because I watched the whole uh, like seven episode like mini series, and it was awesome. So I really hope that that comes through in the writing uh, as it goes on. Uh, so. Lastly, uh, we just want to remind you that we have a Patreon. We we are on Twitter. Uh, I tend to lurk on uh, some podcasting and book forums on Reddit, so you might find me there. We have a Facebook. Um, and please make sure you leave us an iTunes review. Uh, that just tends to generally be where people uh, check reviews. And iTunes is where most people um, follow and listen to podcasts. So it'll really help out the show if you give us a good review. Or honestly, just give us an honest review. Like, you know, five stars yeah. is, is great and preferable. We're, I but am like, wide open to how can we make this more enjoyable or anyone that yeah. spends their time listening to our voices. Yeah, and uh, if you're in any like podcasting groups or any book groups, or you just have some book nerd friends who you think might like the show, please just tell tell us uh, tell them about us. Rather, uh, word of mouth is um, is really the way that I tend to listen to po- uh, like new ugh, I, the way I tend to discover new podcasts. Unlike discovering how to use my mouth to speak English. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so I think I think that's it for this one, Chris. Do you have anything uh, else? Well, yeah, one last thing for me uh, while we're on the subject of criticism, uh, if if you have any audio quality questions comments concerns feel free to talk about that too because i try my best to make things sound better and better and do a better job try to edit more get fancy new plugins to make us sound neater or whatever um so anything on that front is super welcome if you have a problem or something that's been annoying you for like 40 episodes maybe i can finally fix it if you let me know what's up but other <laughs> than that i don't really have much else to say yeah, um, hint, Chris just got a new plug-in that he's very excited about. That's probably why he's asking. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, Indeed. I mean, I mean, if, yeah, if, if I'm doing something really annoying with my face that I'm not noticing, please tell me, or, you know, if, I don't know, there are some other issues, let us know. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it. So, uh, without further ado, thank you all, and, uh, until next book. See you later, Paris. Bye, Chris.